That's 250 grams of protein. Protein. Protein drinks. Protein. 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 Okay, so protein is important. In fact, it might just be the most important macronutrient in your diet. Maybe you're a gym person, you track your macros, you're serious about training, you might actually be eating too much protein. Or perhaps you don't lift weights, but you're health conscious, you stay active, play some sports on the weekend, you might be under consuming protein. In this video, we're doing a deep dive into what protein actually is, how much you need, and some fascinating facts I bet you didn't know. Welcome to Health Food Hacks. My name is Ed, and I'm a personal trainer and nutritionist specializing in athletic performance and weight management. Let's get into it. So here we have a range of household common protein foods that we all know and love. We'll be categorizing slash rating these proteins using the three most common protein rating systems. The first one is biological value or BV. This is a measurement of how efficiently the body uses absorbed proteins for muscle and tissue synthesis. It ranges from 0 to 100 and eggs used to be at the very top at 100 but then we invent whey protein and that scores around 105 to 110. The second system we'll look at is PDCAAS or Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score. This is the food's amino acid score or profile and how well it's digested. Remember, amino acids are building blocks of proteins. The third system we'll look at is complete versus incomplete proteins. Now, complete proteins contain all nine essential amino acids and incomplete proteins are missing or are quite low in one or more essential amino acids. Now, essential amino acids are amino acids that we can't produce in our body. We have to derive them from food. And lastly, we'll be looking at protein content per 100 grams. And you'll actually be surprised which animal protein has the highest protein per 100 grams. So, for biological value or BV, whey protein comes in at number one, scoring about 105 to 110 out of 100. So, it's very efficient protein. We absorb it very well and we use it very well. Next on the list is eggs. This scores 100 out of 100. So, again, very digestible, very quickly utilized by the body. Then we have beef that scores around 80. We have pork that also scores around 80. We have chicken at 79. Then we have sea bass at around 75 to 80. Then we have tofu at about 65 to 75. Then we have pea protein. This scores around 65, and then we have lentils. This scores around 49. Now, PDCAAS, that's the Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score. This is the amino acid profile of the food and how well it's digested. Whey protein comes in at number one, scoring a PDCAAS of one. Then we have eggs, this also scores one. Then we have chicken, this scores 0.95. Then we have pork, this scores 0.94. Then we have beef, this scores 0.92. Then we have sea bass at 0.90. Tofu at 0.90. Pea protein at around 0.89. And lentils at around 0.60 to 0.70. Now, I know this is a lot of information and you may be thinking you just want to know how to calculate exactly how much protein you need, but hang in there and we'll get to that in a minute. Let's just take a quick look at complete versus incomplete proteins and the protein content per 100 grams of food because this is key to calculating your daily needs. Complete proteins contain all nine essential amino acids your body can't produce on its own. These include most animal proteins like beef, pork, chicken, fish, eggs and dairy, but also a few plant-based sources like soy and quinoa. Incomplete proteins are mostly plant-based and they're missing one or more of the essential amino acids. But don't worry, if you eat enough variety of plant proteins throughout the day, like rice and beans together, you can still get everything your body needs. Now let's take a look at how much protein is actually in these foods. Here's a rough breakdown of common foods and their protein per 100 grams, starting from the highest. As you can see, whey protein is at the top, it's king, and we have animal meats that score high, with chicken and pork scoring the highest out of the animal meats. As you can see, protein content varies a lot depending on the food. Animal-based sources like chicken, beef and fish give you high protein hips per serving, while plant-based options are lower per 100 grams, but you can still meet your needs by combining and eating enough volume. Understanding this helps you build meals that hit your protein target, no matter what your diet looks like. And at last, I'm going to explain to you how to calculate your protein needs. This really depends mainly on your activity level and goal. Whether you're maintaining, losing fat or building muscle, take a look, pause if you need and work out how much you need based on your activity level. For example, if you're mostly sedentary, doing little to no structured exercise, the recommendation is around 0.75 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. For recreational exercisers who might train a few times a week, the ranges go from 0.8 to 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight. For endurance training like running, swimming or cycling regularly, 
1.2 to 1.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is needed to support recovery. For strength training and powerlifting, the range increases to 1.4 to 1.8 grams per kilogram to support muscle repair and growth. Teenage athletes, growing teenage athletes, need more, typically between 1.5 and 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, depending on the sport and intensity. And if you're on a fat loss program, higher protein is needed, around 1.6 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. This helps preserve lean muscle mass while you're in a calorie deficit. And finally, if you're aiming to build muscle, protein should fall between 1.8 and 2 grams per kilogram of body weight, ideally spread throughout the day in balanced meals. So an 80 kilogram bodybuilder would need around 144 to 160 grams of protein. That's around 576 to 640 calories from protein. But here's an important note. More protein isn't always better. A lot of people think that eating excessive amounts of protein will automatically build more muscle, but your body can only use so much. Any surplus protein that your body doesn't need for recovery or growth can be converted to glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis and stored as fat if your calories are too high overall. So it's important to get enough, but not overdo it. Balance is key. Use these ranges, match them to your activity level, and you'll be on the right track. Alrighty, well done for making it this far into the video. To wrap up, here are three quick protein facts most people don't know. Number one, your body can't store protein. Unlike carbs or fats, there's no dedicated protein storage. Once your body uses all of what it needs, the rest is either burned for energy or converted into glucose. That's why spreading your protein out across the day is more effective than dumping it all in one meal. Number two, protein is crucial for bone health. We usually think protein is for muscle, but about 50% of your bone volume is made of protein. Low protein intake has been linked to weaker bones and higher fracture risk, especially in older adults. Number three, your body turns over hundreds of grams of protein daily, even at rest. You break down and rebuild around 250 to 300 grams of protein per day, just for things like cell repair and enzyme function. So even if you're not training hard, your body still needs protein just to maintain itself. So yeah, protein is a big deal, but now you know how to use it smarter. And that's a wrap. Now you know more about protein and can hopefully make some informed decisions. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing as it helps me bring more nutrition and health videos to you. And we'll see you on the next video.